Welcome, welcome! It's my dog with the Texas Space Navy bringing you another Star Citizen video. And today we're going to talk about Alien Week. I know it's a couple days late. It started on Friday. Uh, better late than never. So let's check out a couple of things about Alien Week. So to start it off, they have this uh, Join Us for Alien Week write-up. And it pretty much is going to introduce a lot of the, the competitions and the new stuff that they have, have coming out or Alien Week, like Gatak's first entry, which is the Raylan, um, some of the more limited time offerings that are alien ships, because alien ships are not always available for you to purchase in the game. Then they have the Intergalactic Cook-Off, which is one of the competitions, the Alien Trading Card Competition, which is kind of cool, I've seen some good ones out there. Uh, then Time Translate, so... Last year you could translate Banu. This year they want you to put your skills to the test to decipher Xi'an. So keep an eye out for the lore post early in the week. So it'll be like tomorrow or the next day that you'll be able to get this uh, write-up to translate in it from Xi'an. Uh, then we get different factoids on Twitter and Instagram. Like there was a really cool one about Banu that don't they don't really sleep much. Uh, they really get cat naps about 10 minutes at a time and no more than 90 minutes. And they just sleep wherever they want to, like where they're standing, they're sitting. Yeah, the man who would just conk out. So a pretty interesting factoid about them. Uh, inside Star Citizen, we had that come out on Thursday a little bit, introducing the Banu, Shion, Tavarin, and the Van Duel. I wonder if we get another one this week. And Star Citizen Live, which was actually pretty good. They created a whole new um, race, a fictional race, in the Star Citizen universe. So it's fiction within fiction. <laughs> and it was based off of a sloth. That was the main uh, animal creature that they used. And it came out really cool looking. Jeremiah Lee did really good on that. Alright, let's take a look at the Out of This World Offerings. Here it says make contact. In observation of first contact day and in celebration of the wondrously diverse array of alien vessels available to human pilots in the verse, it's time once again to celebrate. That's right, it's Alien Week. With limited time deals on the hottest ships from Aopa, Esperia, the Banu, new special paint schemes and armor, collectible alien-centric merchandise, and even a human market debut of Xi'an Industrial Shipsmith, Gaytac Manufacturer. There's something here for everyone. Man, that is like a really long sentence. That was one sentence. It was a paragraph long sentence. Holy cow. Okay. So first up, we have the Gaytac Ray Lin, which we went over on Thursday. And as you can see, I've got the Chairman's Club versions of it with the ship with the paint job or bond $200 or just the paint job for 11 bucks. Then we also have the regular war bond version of $200 and the standalone of $225. So yeah, you got it. Two different versions, the standalone and the war bond. And of course, if you're chairman's club, it unlocks the, the paint job to buy as well. Let's go down to Talon Returns, the Spirit of the Warrior. And let's take a look at this first package here, which is the Talon Alien Week Collection. Uh, for $240, you can honor the Tavarin spirit and aesthetic with both the Tavarin and Shrike fighters, a brand new Oscillus paint job replicating the look of the ships during the Second Tavarin War, and two striking variants of the Aves armor from CC's conversions, the equal parts sensational and practical. Okay, so the really cool thing that or cool thing. The different thing that you should see in this pack is the different Aves armors. Uh, originally, they had one Aves armor, and it had red like this in the ribs, and you know where all this color is, is was red uh, in the eyes and everything. Now they've kind of changed it up. They've got the regular Aves armor, and they've added the Aves Talon armor and the Aves Talon Shrike armor, uh, which we'll kind of go into here in a second. But this is two hundred and forty dollars for the whole pack here. Uh, you have the Asperia Talon and the Talon Shrike, both for $115 right now. The Oscillus paint job, which we did just mention briefly what it is, why it's in the game. It's a livery that replicates the look of the Talon during the Second Tavarn War. 
It features a red fuselage meant to draw attention and trick the aggressor into shooting at the most heavily armed part of the ship. So that's what it's replicating. It looks like it's got the regular iridescent paint job here and then the red fuselage uh, going into kind of a red uh, wing shape maybe there. Maybe it's just a fuselage that's red and the way the light's bouncing off of it, it's making all this other red. Uh, but yeah, that red fuselage is supposed to draw the attention of the attacker and try to shoot the most heavily armed part. You have the Abe's Talon Armor and Helmet set, which if you look at the write-up on it, it's Honor the Devourin aesthetic, uh, manufacture white, green, green, gray, and black plating to perfectly evoke the shape and language imbued into the iconic ships. So it's meant to replicate the, the ship armor a little bit more with these uh, Aves Talon and Aves Talon Shrike armor sets. Twelve fifty. That's a lot of money for an armor set. I mean, that's more than the paint job. I, I know it's going to have much more function than the paint job, but what do you guys think? Is that too much for a whole armor set in real world money? Uh, let me know in the comments down below what you think about that, because I think that's a little much. Uh, then you can upgrade into the Asperia Talon. So how do you do that? Well, you would click on the upgrade now. It would pull up the upgrade page. So you can see it's 4115, but you're getting a little bit of a bonus for doing War Bond. Uh, my guess is you're probably getting $10 off. Um, so let's say I wanted to upgrade my Cuddy Best in Show to it. I could do that for five bucks. So $100 value ship for five bucks, you could get $115 value. So yeah, they're giving a $10 off for the War Bond upgrade into the Asperia Talon. Or the Talon Shrike. You can do go either way there. Pliable ship speed, style, and power. You've got the Aopa Nox, which is a hover bike that's really fast uh, for $45. This thing needs a, a little bit of work, so if you get it in game, you just know that it's not perfected. It's going to need some work done to it. The Car 2 All has jumped up to $170. Uh, this one used to be $150. Uh, very maneuverable ship. A little big for its purpose because it's still a light fighter or scout. But it's a little big to me because uh, it's just a big target. You're, it's easy to hit these independent thrusters and cause all sorts of havoc for your flight. So uh, yeah, Car 2 All, $170. Not sure it's worth that much, to be honest does have size 4 guns on it. Uh, it might be one you want to free fly this week and test out for yourself. Banu Defender, $220. Of course, this one used to be a little cheaper as well. Um, I like the Banu Defender. I liked it more <clears throat> when the Tachyon Singe weapons were a little stronger, um, when it was considered more of a medium fighter. Now I think it's considered a light fighter. Yeah, I don't know. And is this thing going to be able to dock with the Banu Merchantman? That's a good question as well. Uh, but I do like the Banu Defender. Question is, does it come with a new paint job? It does not. All right, let's move on. $275 for the Vanduul Blade from Asperia. This is a remake of the Vanduul Blade, which is a light fighter. At $275, it's the most expensive light fighter you can get in the game. It does not perform to the value. So, not yet anyways. Now, maybe after some reworks, maybe it will perform to that. Of course, part of the price tag is the alien tax and the fact that it's a Vandal ship. You'll see that with all the Vandal ships. Um, it's debatable on if they're worth their price tags, but... Yeah, this one at $275, you're not going to get that value out of the ship unless you're using it to probably to infiltrate Vandal space if they can't tell that you're not a Vandal. Anyways, so yeah, it's $275, not worth it. The Prowler at $440, and this is a dropship. It's a dedicated dropship from the Tavarin. Uh, it replicates the ships they used uh, to put troops on the ground. Uh, with the air shield technology, they have doors in the sides. Uh, they can also um, use these 
repulsors along the hull of a capital ship, stealthily creep up on it, get close, drop the troops out on the capital ship to infiltrate the innards of that capital ship. Very useful ship, at least in theory. Uh, you can also get some different paint jobs for it out in the verse, or, well, in real life, I should say, for your ship in the verse. Um, that can make it pretty cool looking. But I know they have the polar paint job is one of them. The original paint job for it is pretty awesome, actually, so you don't even need to go that route, but yeah. Banu Defender. So, as you can see, it's normally worth $220. Let's take a look at the upgrade and find out how much discount you get by doing the War Bond upgrade. So you can see I take a ship that's $195 and it would only cost me five bucks. So you get a $20 discount for doing this upgrade into the Banu Defender. Uh, so keep in, keep in mind that, you know, if you're doing your CCU change, your cross chassis upgrade chains, the Banu Defender may be a really good one to throw in there. Uh, future flyables beyond power. You've got the San Tokiai at two hundred and twenty dollars, so that matches the Banu Defender in price, and it probably will match or come pretty close in performance. Actually, I bet this thing outperforms the Banu Defender. Time will tell. We don't have it yet. Uh, we won't have it for a long while. Still, um, this is supposed to be a medium fighter from the Xion. And so you can expect some really good maneuverability. And this one actually has armor and I think four guns. So uh, yeah, could be a good buy at 220 because it hasn't come out yet. This will probably go up to at least 250, I would say, at least. Banu Merchantman, the bell of the ball at $500. You heard me right. The thing's gone up another $50 since, uh, well, since December. Or November. Uh, the Merchantman was 450. I actually have one of these in buyback at $250 with a two-year insurance. Uh, so the insurance isn't great on it, but I mean, $250 is half the price of what it is now. I mean, that's really awesome. This thing's going to continue going up in price the closer and closer it gets to flyable. I would not be surprised if it hits $700 or more, maybe even $750. So. You could actually save some money now by buying this thing. And, uh, you know, if you just wanted to use it to upgrade into something else later on, a bigger ship, maybe like a Polaris, you could get some good value out of doing it. Now, you could get more value possibly out of upgrading to it. The Warbond version, I believe, saves you 50 bucks. And let's take a look to make sure. So we'll go down to the most expensive ship. It'll let me upgrade into it. So technically I could upgrade the Prowler into my Merchantman and it costs 10 bucks. So $50 savings off of the uh, normal price for the Banu Merchantman. Um, that's some really good savings. Really good savings uh, compared to what the price is right now. So if you have a ship you don't mind upgrading, you know, upgrade into the Banu Merchantman, you'll save $50 by using the War Bond upgrade, which means you have to use real world cash on that, not credits. All right, so yeah, we have some more paint jobs. We've got the Defender Platinum paint job, which is really nice looking. I kind of like the Defender with that paint job scheme. Prowler Oscillus paint, which we saw uh, up there for the regular Talons. You know, I may want to get this for the, the Prowler. That could be a pretty cool paint job to have, especially if you've got the Talons matching it. Um, I don't know. We'll have to take a look at that. Uh, then you also, that's $16. We also have the collectible pin set. It's normally $35, I believe, because I'm Chairman's Club, or maybe it's because I'm a subscriber. It's $31.50. Yeah, it's because I'm a subscriber. Um, Alien Complete Pack, $29.51. $22.50 for War Bond and $2,500 non War Bond. Let's see what you get in that. You're going to get the Gatak Raylan. You get Esperia Talon, Talon Shrike. Prowler, Defender, Nox, the Nox Q, which is a different colored Nox. It's kind of a special edition. Uh, the Cartu Owl, the Glaive, the Blade, the Santoki Eye, the Banu Merchantman, but no Scythe. And that's because the Scythe is even more rare 
Um, those are only available as they're not even they're not even recreations from Asperia. They're actual Vandal scythe that have been converted for human use. Uh, that's a whole nother story, but you don't get that. That's the only ship that you don't get. That's alien. Everything else you get here, and it is um, up to you on if, what you if you think that's a good value or not. Just gonna be honest with you. Uh, so that's the Alien Week offerings. What do you guys think of Alien Week? Uh, are you into it? Do you like some of the alien ships? Are you picking up anything? I know I picked up the the Raylan. Um, what what are you guys thinking about it? Uh, let me know. What's your favorite ship here? And uh, like I said, let me know if you're picking up any of these ships in the comments down below. If you want to support the channel, you can do that by clicking or going to uh, my YouTube members page or the Patreon, which will be listed in the description down below. Uh, I really do appreciate that. Make sure you hit the like button for this video. It'll help us out on the algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed, what's wrong with you? Hit that subscribe button. Uh, come back and see some more videos uh, by the Texas Space Navy. We certainly appreciate all the contributions and the support we get. So thank you so much. I'm Mud Dog with the Texas Space Navy, and I'll see you guys out in the verse.